All right. It's good to have some themes back once in a while here. Hello again. This is Ben Hitchcock Cross talking to you. I got the cans on because we're going to listen to um, the hot mic conversation. I'm going to react to it as if I hadn't heard it 30 times before. Um, and we'll go from there. All right. Well, let's do it. Policies and procedures to have corrected this. Every other agency has protections for its employees. I have this conversation with Ramona. I will have it all the way up the food chain. Please do. We are hung up. All right, so that's the judge is Benita Morgan, and the bureaucrat there is Matt White. Uh, again, he's the head of um, the um, he, the investigation section, um, and um, he's the, the investigation bureau. He's the, the bureau director, bureau director. Whew. He's the peer of the judge's supervisor, Maria Seltzer. Isn't that weird that a judge could have a supervisor? Um, and normal. Now, what is she talking about? She's talking about, let's just, for example, a division of administrative, uh, there's other hearings and other departments that have different rules. And this says, unless otherwise specifically provided by law, all hearings shall be held at the offices of the division or at the location designated by the administrative law judge. Hearings may be conducted outside the offices of the division at the discretion of the administrative law judge. Within the discretion of the administrative law judge, pre-hearing and other conferences may be conducted by telephone and witness testimony at hearing may be allowed to be by telephone if necessary and desirable. Okay, so that basically gives all the power to the hearing examiner. And this is, again, HA 106 uh, in uh, the procedure and practices for contested cases uh, at the Division of Hearings and Appeals. Interesting. Okay. Now, <clears throat> just for example, all the ALJs in the Equal Rights Division have recused themselves uh, because of perceived bias towards Calvin Furman uh, and the Teresa Fatheron case. So it'll be interesting. That case is apparently going to the um, Division of Hearings and Appeals uh, from the Department of Administration. It'll be interesting to see if they try to say that those rules apply or, in fact, um, equal rights rules apply. <clears throat> it would, of course, be my position that the equal rights rules apply because it's not our fault uh, that there's bias in favor of Calvin Furman. Now, <clears throat> let's keep going. St I have, if you stick to the end, I hate doing this, but if you stick to the end, I will tell you the update uh, with the judge. To try, I am more than happy to draft and write all of the initial policies that should be done for ERD, uh, just like you have them for DOA. And She's other talking about restricting just access right to public to hearings. Ludicrous in our administrative rules. Right. I've done this before. No problems doing it. I'm just not going to maintain a 90 plus caseload and do somebody else's homework. I don't know what she's referring to. Ramona Natera is my opinion uh, there. I don't know when she's saying she's done this before. I don't know where she's done this before, what exactly she's referring to, but she's talking about closing um, equal rights hearings to the public and nothing else. Yeah. Um, and Matt I'm White is apparently to totally for that. To um, what this man is allowed to do. That's me. And the manner in which he treats people. Whether it's degrading, uh, humiliating, uh, de defamatory. We already have one ALJ who's yep. having a suit. You've been she says we already have one ALJ who has filed a suit. She's directly talking about Calvin Furman in the middle of my hearing. And again, Calvin Furman has sued me for defamation um, for comments that I made about his hiring process as an ALJ. <coughs> it's kind of. I mean, you'd think that would be a f topic of free speech. Um, but, you know, we'll see how that works out. Stuff. Yep. And nobody does anything about it and says, oh, that's okay. I'm tired of the, you know, somebody spoke grape juice on the white carpet and the mom going, that's okay. And, and somebody made a comment that I was, you know, she's talking about comparing me exercising um, my client's rights. Uh, to a child um, spilling grape juice on the carpet and herself uh, as the one who's clearly violating people's rights. And, I mean, well, you, her behavior, I guess, speaks for itself as the mom. Or, no, I guess she's talking about Ramona Natera, Maria Celso, or those are the people who are saying, oh, it's all right. And she's the super mom there 
um, telling us that it's not okay. The mom, the bad parenting there. Um, there's not parenting going on here. There's, there's, there's a law and there's rules. And the, the question, what we're doing here is we want all of our rights, not just special rights. We want all of them and we want them here and we want them now. What the law entitles us to that we're not getting prejudiced against because we are getting prejudiced. We should not be prejudiced because we are demanding that the Department of Workforce Development Equal Rights Division follows its own rules. That's it. That is it. She's pointing out, by pointing out that unemployment has different rules and the Division of Hearings and Administration has different rules, maybe they're kind of different kind of cases, I don't know, that those rules that we should be punished and it's outrageous and her agency has held her out to dry because it's expecting her to follow the rules. And she's going to, she has her own plan. As far as I can tell, she's going to craft her own rules. <clears throat> not okay. It's not. It's not okay. I, no one has the right to harass somebody else in the, in the, in the purview of their employment. That's what the administrative law judge for the Department of Workforce Development Equal Rights Division, whose job it is to enforce the Wisconsin Fair Employment Law, which prohibits sexual harassment in the workplace, for example, that's what she's going to talk about. And she's going to focus, I think, on her perceive, my, her perceive, perception of my conduct towards the people who answer the phones. And that's what this agency has allowed him to repeatedly harass people who answer the phones, people who supervise others who just are trying to file their job. Yeah. And file their jobs. So I, I, <clears throat> it's a problem with these vague um, accusations. I just don't have any idea. It's impossible to respond to the people who answer the phones. Um, I don't think I've ever had a negative interaction uh, with Tim uh, over the phone, and I don't think I've ever had a negative interaction at this point with Tina. So I don't know, and I still don't understand. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what. That's the problem here. You just you want to be nice, and it's the vague accusation. Just you just got to try to respond. But okay, um, okay. Like some more information. Happy to change. <clears throat> It's never my intention, let's be we, that we can be clear on, uh, to give anybody, any worker, a hard time. Uh, supervisors, that's a different story. So let's go into that comment there. I kind of think she's talking about Maria Seltzer and that she's being harassed merely because she's being super, she's supervising here. Let's, we, let's try to listen to it again. repeatedly harass people who answer the phones, people who supervise others who just are trying to file their job. Yeah. And file their jobs. Okay, and, and I'm not uh, sure because Matt White interrupts, but she says people who are just trying to supervise people are just trying to file a complaint. I don't know what that means. Um, I, I suspect, again, she's talking about her boss, Maria Selsor, um, but I'm not sure. And again, if somebody can show me something differently, some behavior on my part that they're objecting to, other than me making them follow the, or really demanding they follow their own rules, um, I'm more than happy to take in that feedback. Um, I have a very thick skin. I've dealt with bullies. I could have him for breakfast and, and still have room for lunch. Um, he's picked the wrong person to deal with, and he knows that. Um, so I have no problems having cases with him. That's why I told him, just give me, I'll deal with the boy. Yeah. He's not going to run over the top of me. Okay, let's quote that again. Um, sorry. <laughs> and, and still have room for lunch. Room. Um, he's picked the wrong person to deal with, and he knows that. Um, so I have no problems having cases with him. That's why I told him, just give me. I'll deal with the bully. Yeah. He's not going to run over the top of me. Just and give it has, to me. I'll deal with the bully. He's not going to run over the top of me. Um, but, um, yeah, and he's, you know, gunning for bear. And he's now 
So I mean, I'm sorry. When she's saying that's why I told them, it's not clear if she's talking about Maria Selsor and Ramona Natera or just Maria Selsor, her immediate supervisor. But either way, um, the what the message there is, I think, pretty clear that she's asking to have this case assigned to her, not for the purpose of having a fair hearing, um, but for the purpose of not letting the bully go over the top of her. So if that communication was to Maria Selsor and Ramona Natera, there's, the, there's some significant problems there. The, the core issue here is simply this. Name one other judicial form in which the judges get to pick the cases. It's not heard of, with good reason, because you have things like this happen. And that's my opinion uh, from my reading of... Uh, you know, judicial immunity, is it starts once the case is assigned to you. So getting the case assigned to you might be outside the bounds of judicial immunity. Just, you know, saying that out loud here. Doing this whole, whole other thing. Um, when I have a hearing in person, uh, I always have some sort of officer presence simply to maintain decorum. I find it keeps people a little toned down. Uh, so... That's her giving her, remember, on the, there's a recording, she says, basically, I generally have it, the, um, the police there, some, okay, that's what she says, an officer. And I say, well, if you, only sometimes, then you have to give a reason, because you can only, if you, unless you always do it, judge, then, then you have to give a reason. So then it shifted, uh, in my opinion, the story to, I always have an officer here. And I think this is her trying to, just put that story out a little bit more is what I'm getting uh, from that there. Um, it Maybe we have not been able to verify. I will be 100% uh, transparent about that. I do not have any information if she always or always does not. I just suspect she does not, uh, but just that. Um, but we still need to keep in mind that it is... Uh, there's another fact out there. The last conversation that we had uh, was me saying that I think thought that it was she could did not have the legal authority to prevent us from recording. And um, she very loudly suggested that she did. And um, we would see about that or something along those lines. Um, so that's why there was there's no. It wasn't a, just as if we showed up and the police were there. There, there was clearly some communication specifically about the recording. And um, so I think I think that the police were there for two reasons. Um, I think there's at least two things that are going on. Number one, the judge and the recordings. I, I do think that that was an independent thing. But we also know that they were there to keep me from the subpoenaed witness, uh, Secretary Pachacek. Let's this cannot be underscored enough. And we'll get into this shortly because it come up. The secretary of the Department of Workforce Development used to be the deputy secretary at the Department of Corrections, and she was the supervisor of the investigation, uh, the internal affairs, who did the investigation in the case that we're talking about. That's why she's a subpoenaed witness in the case, uh, the, at the hearing. And yet, there's on this recording, there's going to be talk about how they're actively, the judge and Matt White and others at the department are actively working on keeping uh, the subpoenaed witness out of the hearing. Um, so, but once again, he did it on Monday, he did it again today, he immediately comes in and starts screaming and yelling at, at Olmanson. I mean, I think we've got enough of that recorded that, um, and I don't need to defend, look, but I think the, the recordings speak for themselves about who's yelling and who's not. I think that's the fairest way to all put it. And calling her a liar and this and that and false this. I mean, his, his briefs uh, like, repeat with, with lot lies. I think it's a false statement to say that I called Andrea Olmanson a liar, that I said she was a liar. I think that's a false statement. Um, and I'm shocked to hear this um and let's be clear i do not think that she's talking about my briefs with regard to andrea olmanson i don't think that's when she says i'm a liar i think she's talking about the many briefs that i've written about why she should recuse herself the conflict with amy pachacek 
the ex parte communications that we've already revealed in this case, and so forth. That, I think, is why she's calling me a liar. Because I've said that she's, uh, the several times that I've said that she's made false or contradictory statements, those, I think, are also what she's referring to. She's not talking about uh, the merits of the case in that sense, but I could be wrong. Th that was the wrong choice. I totally take that back. She's not talking about the respondent. She's talking about the merits and the bias of the case, no doubt about it. That can be proven by, by emails and, and yeah. Well, the if they can be proven, then start proving them. I, and I did hear that yeah. several times from the judge. She would say, um, and I would say, Judge, you didn't respond to substantively to the motion. And she would say they can be proven. Well, that's the, now's the time. Now's the time. You can't say that I'm saying something that's wrong and then saying as a judge that I've got the information, but I'm, I'll let you know some later time. That's not the first time we'll heard that from this judge. I, prove it. I, I document everything. I already summarize everything. I'm prepared to go at a moment's notice with anything he has to say with footnotes, dates, everything, even though it's not necessary. <clears> so. That and may be a bit of hyperbole on her part. And um, that being said, I go home and take a break. We'll get started. We are here for six days. Yesterday we had two witnesses. Monday we finally had one. Um, so that's kind of where we at. The one request, I guess, he made to the officer Pomeroy. He was pretty sweet. I liked this. Um, Dennis was here on Monday, and um, and I just want to point out, I got nothing against Officer Pomeroy. I felt he was kind of sweet too. That you can be sweet as high. Um. And still be part of a uh, organization that is violating people's civil rights, and you can still be following orders that it leads you to violate um, people's civil rights. You can still be under policies and practices that cause you to violate people's civil rights. So I appreciate the niceness here, but I think you know, as someone from Wisconsin, I need to be clear that that's not a get out of jail free card. Yeah. Uh, is that, you know, could we be in a bigger room? As I explained, I don't develop the rooms. I don't know where the rooms are. This right. is my third time in this building. The first two times, there's a parking lot that was a parking lot, but now it's construction. Right. And I don't even know. I'm vertically challenged. I'm directly challenged once I'm inside a building as the front. I am, but, I am too. But it's gone, so it's yeah. either on that side, that. It's on the butler side, whatever side it is. Yeah, so that happened, but let's just keep rolling along. Yeah. That way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I was going to do that way, but it's that way. Um, so anyway, I park into the building now. I've got Ramona's stuff. Um, Ramona's got a big parking spot. And, and yeah. She's got a huge parking space. Like, Why is she right whispering here? about that? <laughs> I'll have to let her down the woman to the left of me. I'll feed her here today. And when I left at 7.30, she was the wrong guy because she's probably on the but anyway, more, I guess there's like a little challenge to see who's going to show up first, whatever. Um, but uh, so I don't know who makes rooms. So I guess she doesn't develop or make small, rooms. We get clear the on that. The reason we were moved down here was for security purposes. It was. Yeah, a combination of that and the fact that they're remodeling the fourth floor of the group. Right. The secretary's office, to the extent they're in the building, is working on the third one, is carrying where he might run into people from the SO or the group. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. You hear literally hear something every time you listen to this recording. Um, she indicated that the security purposes, uh, that we were moved down here for security purposes, kind of contradicts the claim that it was her idea to have an officer there. I mean, maybe they would have had an officer up on the fourth floor. See, that actually, no, because I've got Officer Pomeroy telling me that he expected to be up on the third floor but and sat up on the third floor for quite some time before understanding that he was moved down there. So it's possible that the 
request for a police officer, that's what I'm saying here, is one thing, and then the being moved downstairs is a second thing. Um, I don't know. This this just this is uh, this setting is throwing me off here, but we'll get it. Sometimes pe- people come and take your tripods. This is what things happen. Now, we're going to listen to that again because I think it was the most important thing, in my opinion, in the whole thing. I mean, besides the fact that this judge apparently says that she conducted a sham hearing uh, for ten months uh, and wasted, you know, hundred thousand um, dollars, that that I think is significant. But uh, this that uh, actually because we've had motion after decision after decision. Maria Selsor, Judge Gelhard, uh, Judge Benitez Morgan have all told us that uh, the secretary doesn't have anything to do with um, the uh, dealings of the, the hearings. Well, apparently that's false. Right. The secretary's office, to the extent they're in the building, is working on the third floor, and they did not. Uh, to the extent they're in the building. Want his hearing where he might run into people from the SO. He might run into people from the six. So so basically, basically (laughs) we're in this room, and you guys, what I'm going to tell him is that this is the room we have. Does that that sound like a a statement uh, that she's going to tell me the truth or that she's going to massage it? Do you think she's going to be candid? I guess that's the the word I want to use. Is that what you feel that she's saying there? I'm going to tell him? Does that, that mean that she's going to be candid with him? The other room is reserved for hearings off and on. Do we know if the room next to me has anything? Is it possible? We, We're we not don't. moving today because I'm not. I'm, I'm yeah, we, we don't know. Tina's going to check um, Maybe. whether we have any first floor rooms. There's this, there's this one here. Uh-huh. There's the parent Morgan room down the hall. Okay. It's like a great big. Don't know. Don't know. That means rust. That means rust. Good. So I got to talk to you. I haven't figured out who Eric is yet, but we'll work on it. And then, yeah, I know I can go smoke out here. And yes, I smoke because. I mean, I would. I never Did you get that? She smokes because of me. I've driven her. She didn't smoke a day in her life until she met me. No. Uh, although I did, I did have one beer last night in my hotel room. Um, yeah, I had, I had one. You know, probably the most expensive beer I've ever purchased. But when you buy one beer at the hotel, little thingy. You know, I mean, kind of like, so Here comes like, Judge Carlson. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, I'll let them know we're in here. Oh, yeah. Was this like Yeah. I had, you know, I'm here so late. I had, a, I got trapped. There's a separate incident going on down on Hancock where my parking spot. I'm sorry. Okay. We'll just have to pause here for a second. And I, this is unfortunate because um, I've generally found John Gelhard to be fairly reliable. Um, but here's my letter to ALJ. I said John Gelhard, but I met Carlson. October 20th, 8.59 a.m. ALJ Carlson, did you have any ex parte communications with Director White or ALJ Benitez Morgan that you need to disclose to the parties? Question mark. Did these conversations, if they occurred, happen before you made your decision about postponing the hearing? And the judge says, good morning, Attorney Cross. I did not. He responded to that at 10.19 a.m. And I wonder if I said anything uh, in response to that. Um, I may have asked him then to review uh, if he was not aware of, here we go. I say... um, Carl, I just say, have you not heard the recording? And then I send him the recording that we're going through now. And he says, I don't even know what recording you are talking about. Unfortunate. Uh, and there's, I finally, you know, they blocked off the entire street with flashing cars. And I finally approached and when they got it under control, they moved their car. 
Uh, and there's like three people in handcuffs down there. Oh, God. Well, we had four officers here to take that away in handcuffs. Uh, so. Okay, well, that's Unfortunately, they didn't. So. Unfortunately, they, they didn't. Have, they haven't yet. It, 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 it may, if it happens again, they will. They ha haven't um, yet. So. If it happens again, started, they will. They, All right. I, this is day three. Well, you were there. So I'm getting that they want me to be arrested. That was, I think, pretty clear. But also that she had a conversation with them that I would be arrested, They're them promising her that I will be arrested if they can come up with some some grounds again. Um, pretty gross. Pretty gross. Super late last night. I was here till seven thirty. Yeah. Well, what's wrong with that? I was here till seven thirty too. Yeah. Well, oh, that's okay. We, we are coming up with agency-wide rules as to how our hearings are going to be conducted, whether they're in person, whether they're not, whether you can or whether you cannot record. I've already kicked this all the way up the food chain, and people are incorrect in their understanding of the law and the statute. Yeah. So I will be briefing this right This is a lady who doesn't talk care about titles. I've already talked to everybody, and I am more than happy to defend myself and have anybody challenge my statutory construction of statutes. At some point, I will be proven wrong, but thus far, anything I've risen all the way to the Supreme Court, I've been proven right. Oh, yeah. So, at some point, I yeah. will be wrong. Yeah. Okay? But yeah. statutes are my hobby, because I have no fucking life. <laughs> um, so, that being said, yeah. Is that Matt White? Is that I'm dealing with? We haven't even started yet, because well, this nonsense started always, first thing this morning. Oh, that sucks. I, I always thought that... Um, Everybody's run with the rules. They, that these it's too bad we don't get to hear what Carlson was going to say. He and, probably and knew something, true. seeing as he's been uh, there for is a case 25 from years. 1978 that said our hearing. What did he, what did he even Let's be clear that she, 45 minutes previous to this, might have been the day before, she didn't know anything about this case. Nobody did. Um, this is on the Monday, so I guess it's two days before. Andrew Olmanson is the one who showed the judge this case. Uh, and they spent a good hour. I don't know if that's on the record or not. We may have to see talking to Debbie Keither about why Debbie Keither couldn't be in there. And then she spent, I mean, seriously, I'm waiting for the case to go on. And she's got all the time in the world to make sure that we can't record. Um. <sighs> different labor commission. I, let me put it like this. I can't really think of a greater um, blow to the integrity of the Equal Rights Division, uh, let alone jurisprudence of Wisconsin. Um, I mean, literally, there is a ALJ over a case, a judge over a case, sitting judge, who says that they have talked with their supervisors and are working actively against one of the parties. And they're talking with another one of their supervisors about doing it and 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 plotting or at least reacting favorably to the concept of, of one of the attorneys for the, the parties getting arrested. And how, let's put it like this. How could we trust? Well, we'll keep going. The statute 227 at that point read that the hearings were fair, public, uh, fair and, and unbiased and open to the public. Unfortunately, 227 was revised, okay. and um, for some reason, the legislature took it upon themselves to remove the words open to the public. <laughs> okay. okay, so you can't That's run with white something that in the background. That's yeah. Further, these do not qualify. Carlson doesn't seem to have much faith in what she's saying. Um, because we are I don't have any problem with Carlson's we behavior here. He just should have disclosed the conversation. We public notice out <laughs> for people to review. Yeah. 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 From, from the rules. Well, of course I'm peeking in. Right. So yeah. That's just not how that works. I mean, um, kind of sounds so, like let's end this conversation know, uh, here. But it's just because it, nobody could ever explain me why I've been I, asking I, this I, since October of 22. That's just kind of how we've always run. That's great. The laws change, rules change, things change, times change. Yeah. And and that's how we're going. So all of them we're going to look for another way for day day. We're in here uh, because of the destruction on the other floor. It may not be possible. Well, but it's, it's probably going to me. Oh yeah. 
Uh, that that panic button will summon the Capitol Police. Again. I didn't hear what happened. Because the construction on the other floor, it may not be possible. Well, but no one is calling me. So me oh, yeah. I said no one is calling uh, me? That's where they were today. They were in here. Because of the destruction on the other floor, it may not be possible. Well, but everyone it, is calling me. So me oh, like yeah. That, and will, uh, that that right. panic button will summon the Capitol Police again if you need them. Excellent. So. Uh, so, uh, all right. So, okay. Well, hopefully we'll have something else by Friday. Yeah. I, I don't think that that was really a credible statement. I, that last, hopefully, we'll have something by Friday. Um, at all, or the sighing, or the rest. Um, I didn't take that to be very credible, but, you know, that's just me. All right, well, do you want to hear if the judge got yeeted and how it happened? God, I'm like a, such a YouTuber. Here we go. <clears throat> Four o'clock on, uh, and... It, Friday, dear parties, pursuant to 218 Wisconsin stats, this ALJ will recuse herself henceforth from this matter. The basis for this recusal is perceived bias. That's pretty. Um, I immediately, and so first of all, she's got to file a motion. It has to be formal, like she required of all of us. Uh, and that's what the law says, that it needs to be on, a mo on the judge's motion. And there needs to be a finding. See, this sentence there, the basis for the recusal is perceived bias. That's not clear. Is it for the fact that she says drama, drama, drama when Andrea Olmanson is calling the police? Is it for her, you know, act calling me a liar? Is it the, that's the fact that she got caught doing that? Is it because of the hot mic? What's the perception of bias here? Why are people perceiving you to be biased? That may be right. That may be wrong. Who knows? But the record needs to be made there, and the judge needs to put those facts on the record. Now, here's what she goes. This is un almost unbelievable. She then starts a new paragraph saying, outstanding matters, puts a semicolon. Number one, the telephone hearing to be conducted via Teams on Friday from yada yada for the purpose of an oral argument on the sole issue of the award of reasonable expenses incurred in opposing the complainant's motion to compel the production of documents. That means the new judge is going to have to find out, based on the decision that the old judge already decided, whether or not I should have to pay uh, the state's cost for... Um... Now, keep in mind, this motion uh, that the judge found against... Um, she didn't do anything with it for almost two months, even though it was fully briefed. She did, though, the complainant, the respondent, the employer filed two more briefs, and she did do everything in her power to try to get us to respond to those, even though after the deadline was off. So she, again, one treatment for the respondents, for the state of Wisconsin, another set of rules for the worker. Um, pretty uniformly the case, and I think you'll see that if you watch the hearing. Um, that was filed on this matter on August 8th is hereby canceled. Oh, dang it. The telephone hearing will be rescheduled by the new ALJ assigned to this matter as the hearing to determine reasonable expenses is required by the statute. Do you see what's happening there? This judge said that base, I'm recuse myself henceforth. But she's continuing to try to make decisions about the case, let alone the fact that she's admitted now in the record that she accepted the case for the pure point of showing that I couldn't get over her. The complainant still has until November 2nd by four. You, you're going to love this one to uh, file her motion in opposition to the respondent's motion for sanctions stemming from the complainant's oral motion of October 8th, 2024. Guess what? The judge didn't record a large portion of Tuesday night. So we don't have that available. So that's lost forever, uh, which I think is some of the most important testimony in the whole case. Shocker, shocker, shocker. So the judge and her boss, Maria Selsor, and probably Ramona Otero, all got together and, you know, worked on a draft to keep us from recording had Capitol Police there to keep us from recording, stopped the hearing to keep us from recording, and they, why? Because they're going to record. The quote is, the root reason is because the judge's recording is the sole 
a fit record. So therefore, we can't have any other recordings. Unbelievable. The continuing dates for the hearing will be calendared by the newly assigned ALJ. How does she know that? How, what position is she in to decide anything? The newly assigned ALJ will incorporate his or her award into the 804-12C motions, as well as any award of costs and expenses related to the 12-227-483 motions and his or her final decisions on the merits. How the hell does she know any of that? It's because they assigned it instantaneously to Stephanie Brown. Doesn't it seem like they had a conversation with Stephanie Brown already? I'm sure we're going to get into all of that. I First of all, my position is th the person who assigned this case to ALJ Benitez Morgan for the purposes of showing that ALJ Benitez Morgan could not be gotten by me and that she could handle the bully, that is me, that person should no longer be in the position in the state of Wisconsin of assigning cases at the Equal Rights Division to anybody. Period. The end. Um, and that she's proven herself to be biased in this case. Period. The end. And we won't even start on uh, Stephanie Brown, uh, although we do have um, several good uh, videos on her at the... Um, Jose Garcia Hoven hearing at MPS. She also was the Debbie Keither judge. Um, so, yeah, no, we have... Uh, the, this is problematic, to say the least. They haven't responded on this, on the, those objections in any way. And uh, I'm assuming their plan is to try to make this go into the memory hole to the distant future. Um, and we'll go from there. So, um, something's got to be done. We need reformation at uh, the Department of Workforce Development. They need to... the. Um, They cannot assign cases anymore. It needs to be random. That's that's all there is to it. Um, hearings need to be recorded by anybody who wants to record them, and they need to be open to the public. And that needs to be clear, and it needs to be written, and that needs to happen as soon as possible. I also, frankly, believe that there may need to be <coughs> some consequences here. Um, certainly, just given the difficulty and candor um, that I think that we're talking about, <laughs> that we may have seen here from Judge Benitez Morgan um, on recording that many of the people who have uh, cases before her may have issue with that, um, issue with them here, with her continuing to hear her cases. Also, her statements of that she took a case um, explicitly for the purpose of getting the bully, um, that also may uh, make people think twice about wanting to have her as their judge. Um, now, there may be a bigger problem because Matt White is the head of the investigations and he seems to have no problem in participating in this. Um, so they may have a problem with how they're conducting uh, investigations going forward. So that's, um, you know, we've, we've got some issues. Now, we also have the problem of the secretary of the Department of Workforce Development apparently interfered with the hearing. Um, and apparently everybody knows that. Uh, so that's another problem that they have. Um, they've refused to give us public records because um, these conversations between Laura Benitez Morgan and others were attorney-client uh, privileged. Well, they don't apparently have any privilege anymore, so that's another problem that they have. Uh, and finally, there's the big problem of who's going to pay Joanna Stolar for her fees uh, for the last uh, eight months and more. Um, certainly somebody needs to pay uh, for that, um, and it certainly can't be her. So I think the state of Wisconsin is going to have, uh, we're gonna have to, some, to deal with that, and we're going to have to come to some terms here because um, certainly we cannot continue to have uh, this happen. Uh, we cannot continue to have business as usual. Certainly, um, you know, I don't know how many ALJs are going to be. It really does seem like Stephanie Brown's the only one who's going to be left. Uh, who can deal with a case for me, and that's going to be problematic in and of itself. So um, they really need to do, we, we really need to have some examination here 
of uh, the Equal Rights Division and whether the state of Wisconsin is serious about uh, the Wisconsin Fair Employment Act or something else. Uh, because if it is something else, I think we need to be honest and open and upfront to everybody about that. And I also think that regardless of what happens, um, it should never again, we should never, ever have a hearing like the one that we had in Madison at the beginning of the month. And um, the threat of arrest, the behind the scenes conversation, the keeping the subpoenaed witness, the government witnesses out. I mean, that's, each one is possibly worse than the last. Um, something needs to be done. So the time for reform is now. And um, I think we need to start acting here. I will finally close with this. I have invited the Wisconsin Employment Lawyers Association to join me uh, in this. Um, I don't think they have. They're, I don't think they're going to. We'll see what happens. I mean, they may need to be pushed just like everybody else. Um, but I can clearly tell you that we need some action here. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. Thanks for sticking with us. We might drop the camera from time to time, but we'll keep you informed. Thank mm -hmm. you.